Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And today I'm going to show you how to create your own render feature, which is all about pixelization. So it will be a sh custom shader made in Shader Graph, which will allow you to pick the size of the pixels. So if you want to create a retro horror game, something more of a PS1 style, or combine this with other effects. Because I wanted to create a VHS style shader, and this was just the start of it. So I thought it'd be great to make it into a video to help those out. So I'll go through everything that you need to know for setting up, creating it in Shader Graph and using it in your very own game. If you do like the video, be sure to like and make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to support me as well on Patreon, because it helps me out massively. And I just wanted to say that I will put this shader on my Patreon if you want to get hold of it. So what this shader does, it takes the camera image and breaks it down into a grid. Then we can force every single pixel inside a grid cell and then to sample that with the UV positions, which creates a chunky pixelated look. So to get started, you can right click in the project panel, choose create and then choose shader graph. And we're going to go URP and we're just going to choose a full screen shader graph. I'm just going to call this a basic pixelation. We're going to open that out in the shader graph editor. In the top left, you will see the parameters that we can add to this into the blackboard style area. What we're going to choose is we're going to choose a float because we're going to add a new one and we're just going to call this the pixel size. So I'm just going to have this as underscore pixel size. Then on the right hand side, you can see the graph inspector where it has node settings. As long as we click pixel size, we have a setting where we can set the default value. So I'll just set the default value as something like 400. I'm going to grab the first two nodes by selecting over it. I'm just going to move it away for now. We're going to need to create our very first node. So we can right click anywhere and create node. And what I want to do is create one called screen position. So we can select that and screen position gives you the UV of every single pixel in the screen. So UV is essentially between a value of 0 and 1, whereas 0 is the bottom left and 1 is the very top right. And we're going to change this to create that blocky effect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a raw value so we can use this and manipulate it more easily. So now you can see with the screen position, it outputs four different pieces of information. So it's a vector four, and we don't need that when it comes to manipulating the UVs. We only need X and Y for the coordinates. So we need to be able to split that down. So we can right click, create a new mode and use something called split. What we can do is we can drag that output node into the input of the split. So then we only want the R and the G channels to be able to use as essentially X and Y. So we can right click again and we need a new node called vector two, because again, we only needed two particular values. So we can add the R into the X, G into the Y, and you can see it's output into just a vector two. So we can split those and use them just like the original UVs um, would be on the screen. What we need to do is multiply the UV by the pixel size that we created up here. So that essentially just stretches the UV space so the small difference becomes larger. And we do this by grouping the pixels together. So we can right click, add a new node and just use multiply. Now we've got the A and the B channel here. So we can put the output of the vector two into A and then we need to just drag out pixel size from the top corner into our graph and we'll just add that into B. So we're now multiplying these together. So now we need to make sure that these are not a decimal place value anymore they're going to be a whole number so we can make them look nice and blocky. So we can right click on the node and choose floor. And this is going to just take the output of our multiply and just essentially make it a whole number. But now we want to divide. So we divide it by what we multiplied it with. So we can actually create fixed jumps instead of smooth values. So if we right click and create node and just use divide, I'm going to add the floor into the A channel for this. And then grab the pixel size again and just put that into B. So now we can more easily, we'll be able to output those squares. Now we need to sample this using the screen for what pixelated UVs we've just created. So we can now sample part of the screen color with the pixelated UVs that we've created here. So we can right click and create something called, it's called a scene color. So it will take the output of the divide, which we want to use, and we'll get an output here. And then we add that to our base color which will output to the screen finally so with that being created we've got the graph together we'll just hit save and what i'll go i'll go back into my scene view and you want to make sure that you open up your renderer but if you need to find that you can go edit you can go project settings 
and you can go to quality and then if you find your PCRP asset right click and choose properties it will choose and show you the PC renderer that you're using. I've got my PC renderer selected so I can add a new render feature. I want to add a new full screen pass render feature. You can do that and it looks a bit crazy. Now from there what we can do is we can right click and create a brand new material. I'm just going to call this basic pixelation matte. What I'm going to do in my drop down, I'll go to shader graphs and choose the basic pixelation. You see, we have a setting for the pixel size, which is 400 by default. We can go back to the PC renderer. I'm going to add my new pixelation matte material. And you can see that it's already displaying the pixels here, as you can see in our scene. So you see if we're back on our image and then we can test this by making the value smaller and the pixels will get bigger or you can make the value much bigger and the pixels will come much smaller in this case. So we can create a much more varied look if you want a really, really, really pixelated look to your game. So I do hope that you find this useful. Be sure to throw a like on this video and make sure you're subscribed if you like the tutorial. I'll put this shader up on my Patreon too so you can get hold of it. And be sure to check out Unity sales on at the very moment and all of the best deals that I've got down in the description. So a massive thank you to all my patrons. Big thank you to Vershutha and Party of Ten for their amazing support. And everybody else who comes to watch the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.